uh, other educators, Tara and Margaret. Uh, thank you for joining our parrot party today with our bird crew. Um, we're going to be focusing a little bit on enrichment and the backstories of the uh, bigger parrots of Elmwood Park Zoo. So um, we're going to kind of focus a little bit on what we give them to keep them enriched. I uh, have a feeling that this might be what happens the whole time. And this is a great thing to talk about because guess what? This is what parrots do. They make lots and lots of noise. Um, parrots are very, very difficult animals to work with. They, they are um, a higher level of animal that uh, needs a lot of care and a lot of different kinds of care. I know, I know Rex, it's true. And that's really creepy, Sally. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Um, they have the mentality usually of toddlers. They're very, very smart creatures. They're really interesting. They're very, very cool to look at and admire. Um, that being said, they, they don't necessarily make the best pets. And we'll get into why that might be the case a little bit later. These guys are very, very loud and very destructive. You can see that is one heck of a beak that Azul, our blue and gold macaw, has. And all of these parrots have these very <laughs> large beaks to help them to break apart nuts. These guys love, love, love nuts. Sally um, is a little bit odd in that she doesn't particularly love them as much as Rex and Azul, but regardless, those beaks are there for a reason. So, speaking of which, we have a couple different kinds of enrichment that we provide our parrots daily, and um, some of these things include wood. You can see that Sally has already destroyed um, a couple of pieces of this type of enrichment, and you can see that this enrichment does not last long at all. Oh, so you can actually, if um, you're willing and able, we'd so appreciate it, love for you guys to maybe check out our Amazon wish list that we have on our support page on Elmwood Park Zoo's website, because um, some of the things that we have listed there are toys for our birds. Another form yeah. of enrichment is actually where we are today. We are inside our Wildlife Lodge building, and we have some really cool friends hanging out with us today as well. These are our Saki monkeys. And of course, you cannot forget Michael, who's um, on that perch in the back, our iguana, as well as our golden lion tamarins, who are a little bit more <laughs> skeptical, but it's enrichment for all, a very safe way, uh, form of enrichment for our parrots and for our monkeys. Some other types of enrichment that we have, Cardboard, paper product. <laughs> Biggest thing that you have to remember is to uh, take off any glue or stickers because you don't want our parrot to ingest them. But this is great for parrots to tear apart. Things like this. That one, keep our parrots preoccupied. They also help to naturally grind down the beaks of our parrots because their beaks are very similar to your fingernails and hair because they grow and we definitely need to um, help these guys beaks because they're not biting and chewing on things as much as they would be in the wild. Hi Sally, can we turn around? Would you like to try and play with the toy? She says, I don't want that, thank you. <laughs> How about this? I love cardboard. Right? Well, <laughs> so yes, I throw it. I'll just take it. Yes! Yeah! 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 <laughs> can you turn around? Is, um, no, thank you. That's okay. Would you like another piece of cardboard? So a little bit about Sally's background. Um, Sally grew up with a family. There we go, chewing off that cardboard, who unfortunately um, was starting a family. Not unfortunately. Fortunately, they were starting a family. Unfortunately for Sally, um, they were starting a family, and therefore they felt like it wasn't the best fit for them. Um, to have a cockatoo and an infant in their household at the same time. So um, Sally was deaccessioned to Elmwood Park Zoo <laughs> and has been living here for quite some time. Sally is, in fact, the oldest animal in the zoo, and Rex is her close second. She is 47 years old. It has been said that um, Moluccan cockatoos, which is the type of parrot that Sally is, can live into their 90s, which means she can live as long as a person. As long as a person. That's a really long time. 
Um, another form of enrichment that we provide our parrots are food. Now you have to be really, really careful about food enrichment because um, you don't want to make your parrots uh, fat. Uh, that would be unhealthy. But one of Sally's absolute favorite snacks of all time are probably some snacks that you guys like. And those are grapes, and she's eyeing that grape. <laughs> she's like, Can but I it? I'm not going to give it to her. I want to make her work for it. So some of the things that we um, have our parrots do is we train them. Train them for different reasons. We train them to make our lives easier. We train them to help our veterinary staff. So um, it's less stressful for our veterinary staff, less stressful for moms um, and us, <laughs> bird parents, and less stressful for the birds. Um, so we also will have them do different behaviors to keep their minds stimulated and sometimes their bodies as well. Um, for example, we have our black bolt retriever who is fully flighted and it's really, really physically and mentally stimulating for her to do flights. Sally here is unflighted, however, we still have her do a couple of behaviors to help us and her. So I'm going to ask Sally to step up, which is a very common behavior for parrots. Um, something that we uh, want to try our best to avoid is forcing our parrots to do anything. So Kara, Margaret, and I, and um, our other educators that work with our parrots and keepers, we want to provide the opportunity for our parrots to choose what they would like to participate in. So we're not forcing them to do anything, and then we are using something called positive reinforcement um, to enhance their <laughs> behaviors and show them that they're doing a good job. So I will give her a grade for stepping up. Can you step up, please? That was very good. Good job. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm so excited. I'm so sorry. Let me try that again. Very. Oh! How about we step back down? And how about we maybe wave? We can show them what else we do. We wave. Yes, we wave! So we can look at the bottom of her feet. That was so good! I know! That's so funny, Sally Bird. So I'm going to eat in private now. Um, and the cool thing about Sally is that she's going to be holding that grape with her left foot. So just like people are usually left hand or right hand dominant, Sally's left foot dominant. So she's a lefty. She uses that left foot to hold the food that she wants to eat, and she's going to eat all of the yummy inside, but she's not going to eat that skin. She doesn't like that yucky skin. She's going to spit that on the ground. Blech. Um, and grapes are some of Sally's favorites. Some other things she really, really likes are berries, like blackberries. We also have some sweet potato, and we also have some uh, nuts. Again, not Sally's favorite, but Azul saw Azul that. Not really she famous. saw that and said, yes, please. <laughs> so again, Sally is a Moluccan cockatoo or a salmon crusted cockatoo. And after she's done this grape, let me see if I can show you why she's called that. And then we're going to actually move on to some of our other parrots and learn more about them. Can we do some scratchies? Ooh. So that's a really good example of Sally saying, no, thank you. I don't want to be touched right now. And that is fine. So one thing that we'll try and do thereafter is to ask her to do something else. So you can already tell she's putting her foot up, um, but I didn't ask her to do that. So I'm gonna ask her to step up again. Can we step up for a grape? That was very good, Sally Bird. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, two more interesting facts that I will talk about before moving on to our other parrots. I said that these guys are loud. These guys are really loud. These guys, um, salmon crested cockatoos in particular, they can make a noise that is the same volume of a 747 jet engine, which can hurt the human eardrum. That is really, really loud. She's being very quiet right now for a cockatoo. Not screaming all the time is actually pretty darn impressive. Um, the other interesting fact about these guys is that I don't remember what it was. So um, <laughs> I'm going to just go on to the other pair. I'm going to talk about how noisy they are and how long they live. And uh, that's great. So we're going to move on to Kara, who's going to talk a little bit more about Rex. Hi, guys. As Lisa said, my name is Kara. I am one of the educators here. And my buddy to my right, his name is Rex. He is a yellow crowned Amazon parrot. And unlike a handful of other parrots here at the zoo, he's actually of least concern in the wild. So there are still a decent amount of them left. Um, however, the reason he is here with us today is um, as we were talking about earlier, parrots are really hard to care for. But aside from that, they live really, really long. So Rex here could potentially live up to about 80 years of age. 
and he's only 43 right now. However, he has had a few owners in his lifetime, and that's why he's here with us now. So Rex originally uh, did belong to somebody as a pet. Uh, they, uh, in their older age, needed a little bit more assistance, so they passed Rex down to their daughter. And then um, she thought that it was the best idea for his care because she was not fully prepared to care for him herself. She decided that he was gonna have a much more stimulating and enriching life coming here to live with us at the zoo. Now Rex here, uh, he does know a couple tricks. Uh, one of his favorites being a nice little hop. That one we don't necessarily use for medical purposes. It is just cute and adorable. Uh, so I'll show you that real quick. We'll see if he wants to do it. Rex, hop. <laughs> real simple, but really cute. And he's gonna go ahead and take his treat now. So another thing um, about Rex here is before he came to us at the zoo, he actually was around a whole lot of siren noises. Thank you for hopping again. <laughs> so he used to actually live near a firehouse. So birds like these, they're actually really good at mimicry, um, Amazon parrots especially. So this guy growing up next to a firehouse learned all of those really loud siren screams, police siren, police uh, or fire truck, fire engine, you name it. He can make all those sounds. Luckily for us, he does not do that on command. It only happens when he gets really excited. Uh, but that is another perfectly good reason as why they don't make great pets. Because if you have a whole lot of loud sounds around you, uh, they're going to start picking up on those and replicating them uh, at a, whatever time they please. Uh, now, as we were talking about earlier, we do a lot of stuff with these guys to allow them to voluntarily uh, be handled with us. One of the things that uh, Rex does a lot is sometimes his, the top of his head will just get a little bit itchy if he has new feather growth coming in. So typically what I'll do to help him with that is I'm gonna ask him to put his head down and then I'll just give him, give him a little bit of help, give him a little scratch here. I'm not gonna put too much pressure. I'm literally just doing a nice little, little head scratch to help him out here because he can't always get it on his own. Now, as you saw at the very end of that, that little flinch meant that he was done, which is why I removed my hands and stepped away, because he said, okay, that's enough. You got the itch, thank you so much, but I'm done now. Uh, so Rex here also does have a favorite toy. Uh, so over here, Rex uh, really likes this toy in particular. So Rex really likes metal things. Now the reason for that is he does have a beak that grows a little bit faster than any, everyone else here. Uh, so he really likes metal pieces. These keys are hanging in his uh, caging almost every day because he really likes to chew on those and it's a whole lot of fun for him. And that way he can wear his beak down on his own, meaning that he needs less medical care, which is really great for him. Um, another toy that I've seen him play with quite a bit uh, is this. So this is something that uh, last year we actually had a Girl Scout troop donate a whole bunch of these homemade toys. Really simple to make. They were just egg cartons, a little bit of string, and some wooden balls with cardboard. Now, I hang this in his uh, holding space every now and then, and he really likes to uh, shred up the edges of it. Now, that's not necessarily going to wear his beak down, but it is another fun texture for him to play with. Now, um, aside from Rex here, he does have a buddy on the other side of the room, and I'm gonna let Margaret take over to introduce her. Hello! So my name is Margaret, also one of the educators here at the zoo. Um, and beside me here we have Azul. And Azul is a blue and gold macaw. So Azul is the largest parrot that we have here at the zoo. So she is super special, but she's actually younger than both of our other birds here. Um, she is only 18 years old right now. Um, so for them, that's actually pretty young. These guys can live, as they said, they can live up to 80 years, but sometimes macaws can live well over that. Um, so the oldest one on record was actually 112 years old. Um, but the, how old they live is gonna be very much based on the care that they receive. So if she was really well taken care of when she was little and uh, for her, especially for her developmental years, then hopefully she'll live a really, really long time. Um, now we got Azul here at the zoo when she was only two years old. Um, so she has been here almost her entire life. Um, so she came to the zoo for the exact same reason that Sally and Rex did. So unfortunately she had an owner when she was younger and her owner decided that she was a little bit too much work. 
Um, so I know we've touched on that quite a little bit already, but I will reinforce that these guys are a lot, a lot of work to take care of. They require a ton of veterinary care. They require a ton of training um, and obviously a ton of enrichment. So as we've said, they're super smart. They need constant stimulation. They need a lot going on all day. She is obviously very excited right now. Very overstimulated in here, which is great. Lots of things to look at. Um, so she did come to the zoo because of that, which is totally fine now we have her and she'll hopefully live out the rest of her years here. So she's got a long while to stay here at the zoo. Uh, now Azul here also has a couple different things that she likes a lot that we have. Um, so this is one of them. This is a very special one because it's called a forage feeder. Um, so this one has little compartments that open up and if they are uh, good enough at opening things and figuring out how to do that sort of stuff, they can get the food out from underneath that. So we usually put some of her diet in something like this and she's really good at getting it out. Um, now parrots, if you just give them their bowl and their food in it and you just stick it in the same spot every day, that's really boring for them because in the wild, parrots are gonna be forage feeding all day long. So they're gonna leave their nest in the morning or their roost. They're gonna go out, they're gonna eat all day. They're gonna forage on the ground or in the trees and then they're gonna go back at night. So these guys just don't have one or two meals. They like to eat throughout the day. So we try to give her lots of different toys like this that are gonna mimic that behavior and make sure she uh, can spread her eating out throughout the day. Uh, now Azul does know a couple things as well. Almost all of the behaviors that we've trained her to do are gonna be for veterinary care. Um, so for example, she's very, very good at a wave. So that way we can see the bottom of her foot. So if she ever had something going on on the bottom of her foot, she could raise that up and we could see it really well and then give her a second to eat that. Um, but we're really excited. A couple of the things we wanna work on with her are to do voluntary nail trims and wing trims. Um, so that takes a lot of trust. Um, Azula and I have a pretty good relationship at this point. We are getting to the point where she does let me give her some scratchies, just like Rex and Sally over there let them do that. Um, but hopefully at some point, because she does take wing trims so that she doesn't go off into the distance and fly away when we take her outside, um, we want to be able to do those voluntarily instead of grabbing her up and doing them by force. So it would be great if we could get her to that point. But we do have her able to do the wings. Good job put her wings out like that. And she does love grapes just like Sally. So I'm gonna give her a grape and watch her chew that up. She does the exact same thing as Sally where she'll eat the insides out and throw the skin on the floor because who likes that? <laughs> um, so I think at this point, uh, we could talk a little bit more about the enrichment. Yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the enrichment. And while we do so, if anyone watching would love to um, put your questions in the comments, we would be more than happy to answer uh, your questions to the best of our ability um, and we're going to uh, reinforce the fact that there are some items that are already listed on our Amazon wish list that um, are of in dire need for our parrot so one of those things for Sally in particular um, out of the three of these parrots she is the most destructive she tears apart all of her perching <laughs> this is something that we have in her enclosure and it is a really good type of perching that I think is made out of cuddle bone and it helps to um, naturally take care of the bottoms of her feet. So if she were to be perched onto something that was really, really smooth, she might not get the natural coarse texture from different types of perching that she would in the wild that would take care of any like dead skin or sores, for example. So any type of perching that is listed on our Amazon wish list, something that we really, really need, as well as um, some new um, big perching, such as these. This one is uh, barely holding it together. We tried to make it look nice and pretty for all of you guys watching, but um, underneath all this newspaper, it doesn't look very good. Um, it's lasted us a while, but it's, it's time for some new perching. Um, any of this wooden type of perching, is also really, really great. I know that Kara talked about how Rex loves keys and metal. Sally likes keys and metal, but for a completely different reason. Um, Sally likes keys and metal because she loves, loves, loves to throw things. So again, perpetual three-year-old. Remember how I talked about these guys? <laughs> oh my gosh, did you not know how heavy it was? Woo! Yeah! <laughs> uh, these guys take an inordinate amount of care. Um, it's recommended that parrots spend anywhere between four plus hours out of their cages a day. If you want to go on vacation, you have to bring your parrots to a I know, you're so much work. A special bird boarding house, just like you 
take your dog, for example, to a daycare. It's really expensive to carry because usually there are a lot more to handle, as you can see. Um, all of these guys also can say um, a different types of words. Sally, um, for example, this is our nonsense words. We have no idea what she's saying. We think that when people talk over a radio have at work that she's mimicking the muffled noises of those radio sounds. I'm excited. Um, Rex, again, makes a lot of similar noises to what you would hear at a firehouse. Sally can only say two actual words, and those are, hi, Sally. And will she say it on command? Absolutely not, because why would she make anything easy? Because she's a parent, right? So she wants to have fun and make mom's life a little bit difficult. And another huge reason that these guys are often really hard to have as pets or have in captivity is because they bond really closely to people. So Sally in particular, obviously Elisa is her favorite human and she lets her get up close and personal to her and touch her and do all those sorts of things. Um, but it's totally different. These guys have completely different personalities. They bond really closely to certain people, but not always other people. Um, so like I said, Azul and I are working out a lot of things, but that is taking a long time because she is not as trusting for some people. Typically, she really likes men, so she bonds really closely to men. And right now, her only keepers are women. So we're working really hard to make sure that she will let us do uh, a lot of things for her to help take care of her. Uh, another one of my favorite reasons as to why parrots do not make good pets is the mess. <laughs> now, these guys, yes. even though they are super small and it's nothing compared to, let's say, a mess that a dog might make, that is completely inaccurate. And that is because since they forage feed all day long, that means they're pooping a lot more frequently than a regular household pet. Now these guys, parrots in general, they poop typically anywhere between every 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, you do. In total, that's like about 100 times, if not more, a day that they are pooping. That means they're not that easy to clean up after. You're constantly have to, having to clean up the perching that they sit on along with the bottom of their caging as well. That's a whole lot of mess to clean up. So that's another one of my favorite reasons as to why they're not great to take home. Yeah, um, they can also do quite a lot of damage with their beaks. Mm -hmm. Like we said, they eat nuts. Um, Sally in particular has a beak that can crack open coconuts. <laughs> that is right, it can crack open coconuts. People usually have to use some type of ax or rock or throw it on the ground. Um, that means your fingers are not safe um, <laughs> at all. So we all take very, very close precautionary measures. We've also been working with each of these individual parrots for quite some time. Um, and I think one thing we're gonna try uh, before we go into questions yeah, is so. um, another form of enrichment, and that is a bath or a shower. Yeah, so like I was saying, these guys always have completely different personalities. So you'll see they're probably all gonna respond pretty differently. They don't all like this very much, and it's completely by choice. So we're gonna give them the option. If they look excited about it and they look like they're happy, then we're gonna keep going. But if they back away and they're not interested, then we're gonna stop. So Rex usually likes his, but sometimes he's a little iffy about it. So we'll just see. He looks pretty okay with it at the moment. But he'll usually give us a nice little wing up, which means he's really happy. So he's not doing that yet. <laughs> So we'll probably just stop. He's not really interested, but usually he'll kind of sit there for a second and then be like, Woo, this is awesome! Sally did have her head down, so it looked like maybe she was into it. You want to try? What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I can't tell, Lisa. You tell me. Does she, so, so, does she right, have me? Right, 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 right. So it's, um, there are um, again, very, very close behaviors that you want to monitor and, and that they could mean one thing or, or another and they look very, very similar. Mm -hmm. um, so beak clacking um, usually is not the best thing to see. That's usually a defensive behavior where the bird says, no, thank you, please step away. However, when Sally gets really, really excited, mm -hmm. she will clack her beak because she likes to drink the water out of the spray bottle. And see, she turned away right now, so she says, no, thank you. And then we just end right there. And obviously I asked Elisa because I don't work that closely with Sally, so Elisa is the one to ask uh, with what her behaviors are looking like. I can't read her body language as well as Elisa can. So Azul usually doesn't like this, but we're gonna give her the option. So she is immediately leaning away. That's an immediate no, which is totally fine. Sometimes she really loves it. Uh, all right, guys. So I think what we're gonna do now is uh, answer any of the questions that you might have. So uh, Laura is gonna read those off to us and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. Yeah, we do have a few questions this morning. So um, Chris would like to know, 
are Azul and Rex gonna be on exhibit in the birdhouse? Yes, they are. So right now we are currently under construction to build our brand new exhibit for these guys and a bunch of other animals. Um, so upcoming this spring, fingers crossed, we're gonna have that exhibit open and you will absolutely be able to come in and walk through and see Rex and Azul on exhibit with those other animals. So we're really excited about that. Great. And Colleen would like to know, do the parrots have any other friends at the zoo? Any other animal friends at the zoo, maybe? Go ahead. So uh, as for Rex and Azul, I can speak for them at least. Uh, we don't necessarily take them inside of exhibits with other animals. However, they do really love to go on walks, given the temperature is appropriate for them. So we will take them on walks throughout the zoo and let them say hi to all the other animals. I will say that from experience, they seem to get the most excited when we go say hi to the giraffe. <laughs> However, they also have been perked up a little bit when we go by to see the lady bison as well. Now, aside from that, uh, they do have new friends coming, but they have not met yet. So <laughs> fingers crossed that all goes nice and uh, good for them. Yep, and then for Sally, um, she enjoys the company of people more so than other animals, um, and that is usually the case for parrots that are in captivity or um, at a zoological institution um, in the wild, these guys would either fly in flocks um, or have a mate that would obviously be of their species. Um, but these guys have each bonded to um, one or two keepers and or educators here at the zoo. All right, guys, I think that's all of the questions that we have for today. I want to thank you for joining us um, on Zoo School Live with Sally, our Moluccan cockatoo, Rex, our Amazon parrot, and Azul, our blue and gold macaw, as well as Kara and Margaret. Um, we really hope that you guys um, join us next week. And if you want to take a look at that Amazon wish list, we'd be ever so grateful. Thank you guys so much. Thank and you. have a great rest of your day. Bye. You want to say bye, Sal? <laughs> say bye-bye. Hey, say bye. That was very good. Say bye-bye.